started and is now 29. His first pitch fouled off to the right side by Cal Daniels. You can see it's still pretty wet around this ballpark. Daniels stands in there tonight against the point, batting 282. 48 RBIs, 12 home runs. He's hit in 11 of his last 13. Batted 306 over that span. The Reds, 63 and 60 overall. They're 4 and 3 against Pittsburgh this year. 31 and 32 on the road. And there's a strike at the knees. Mark Hirschbeck calls the balls and strikes tonight behind the plate. Steve Ripley's at first, Jerry Crawford at second, and Bob Davidson is at third. One ball and two strikes to Daniels. That's high, two and two. The point is from Glens Falls, New York. Still makes his permanent home up there. Had a great high school career. To the right side, Sid Bream stationed at first tonight. One gone. The point will drive you crazy. He'll be a very comfortable 0 for 4 if that's what you go against him. Because you think you can pitch him and hit everything he throws up there. He's going to talk to Mike Lavalier for just a second. But LaPointe, a very quick worker. You don't have to worry about being a long game with LaPointe. He opened the season with the Cardinals last year. Spent some time at Louisville. Finished the year with the White Sox after being traded for minor league reliever Bryce Hulstrom on July the 30th. With the White Sox, he was 6-3. and three. The Pirates acquired him. Contract of outfielder Gary Reedus from the White Sox. Sabo's batting 273. First pitch in there for a strike to Chris. Point 1 and 0 in one start with Pittsburgh and 10 and 11 in 25 starts with the White Sox. This is popped up and it'll play for Bonilla. Two gone. There is the man credited with doing such a great job here. Just before the game, we got a shot of Sid Thrift, the man in the middle. Vice President and General Manager of Baseball Operations here, Jim Leyland on the right, of course, the manager of the Bucks. And Milt May on the left. Yeah. Larkin bats with two gone, nobody on. Larkin, it was two for four last night. The average up at 288 for Barry. 47 RBIs, 10 home runs. Here's a bunt try and it's foul. The point came up in the majors in 1980 with Milwaukee. He was traded to the Cardinals. Was with them in 81, 82, 83, 84. Went to San Francisco in 85, over to Detroit in 86, and San Diego in 86. Back to the Cardinals in 87. Oh, suitcase to the point. And then to the White Sox. He has made the rounds. He's got a lot of stickers on his back. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm impressed with the fact that he's hung around. I was surprised anybody really took him. I thought he was out of baseball. Pete Rose looking on. That pitch just outside. Two balls and one strike. Larkin leading the Reds in hits with 130. And in runs with 70. And he loses the bat. And it's two and two. Well, he will frustrate you. I'm telling you, he'll show you a fastball just out of the strike zone. And he will change on his change on his fastball. He will change on everything. You saw Chris Sabo way out front. Now you see Larkin trying to hold on to the bat as long as he could and wait for that pitch. But a very deceptive left-hander. And Larkin loses his lumber right here. Look at the bottom drop out of that sinker. Sinking change. LaPointe had a very respectable ERA in 87 with the White Sox, 2.94. He was 12 and 9 with the Cardinals in 83 and 12 and 10 with them in 84. That's inside, full count.
mentioned the deal that brought the point over here. Back in August. Larkin is out on the grounder. Half inning played, no score. Same as last night. If you look out in the outfield, you'll see Cal Daniels, Eric Davis, Paul O'Neill around the infield, Chris Sabo, Barry Larkin. Oops, Dave Concepcion moved in on me. I said that earlier, didn't I? <laughs> Nick Asaski, just seeing if you're paying attention. Bo Diaz behind the plate and Charlton on the mound. And a very inflated ERA that could work down. Bonds takes inside. Barry Bonds batting at 294. Went over three here last night. Outside for ball two. Charlton was born in Fort Polk, Louisiana. Went to school down in San Antonio and on to Rice University in Houston. Two balls and one strike. Earned All-American honors at Rice. Had some international competition as a member of the U.S. team in that World's Fair tournament in Knoxville down in 1982. Just missed the Olympics, Jay. Yeah, he, he was did. in that last cut. He was a step away from being an Olympian. In the center field, Davis is going to get there. The ball hard hit. One out. That's what we like. We didn't get a lot of those hard hit balls right at people on Friday night. Pirates with a record of 68 and 57. As a team, they're batting 258. Here's Lean batting 243. Well, if I went to Puerto Rico, they'd call me Juan Banco <laughs> instead of Jose Lynn. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you want me to get you a ticket? <laughs> I played there. I oh, loved yeah. it. You did. Yeah. One ball and one strike. Inside the lane. Tomorrow we'll televise again from here at Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, and it'll be Tom Browning going for number 13. Against Mike Dunn, he is 6 and 10. There's Danny Jackson in the middle, Tom Browning on the left right there. Into center field. Davis comes on, makes the play. And we'll remind you this telecast comes to you through the courtesy of Mulder Media Broadcasting, authorized under TV rights, granted to the Reds solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Reds is prohibited. The announcers on this telecast are employed by Mulder Media Broadcasting with the approval of the Cincinnati Reds. Here's Van Slyke. Two for four last night, the 292 average, 79 RBIs, 21 round trippers inside to Andy. You know, they, we showed the dugout, we showed Danny Jackson charting. Usually that is the pitcher who's going to pitch the next day's job. Danny likes to, he likes to have his idle time taken care of. He doesn't like to sit around. So Browning is watching him work. <laughs> yeah, and it gives Ch uh, Brownie a chance to watch the hitters as well. He doesn't have to concentrate on the pitcher's pitch so much as he can watch what a hitter might be doing. Van Slyke is leading the Pirates in hits, in home runs, and in RBIs. And I'll guarantee you triples. 15 he has. 3-0. and oh. It's one of the very Reds of a team have only 19 from yes, sir. This is a very talented young player, as we mentioned last night. There's a strike at the letters. He got the opportunity to play regular here, as we've mentioned, and uh, he delivered. And popped up out behind second. Larkin, a one, two, three inning after one. Nothing shaking for either side. Into the second inning, and Eric Davis leads it off. Oh! 
strike right down central. Davis batting 279. Three home runs, 11 RBIs in his last seven games. He's batted 320. 15 game winning RBIs now. Tops in the league. Good pitcher for Eric. It's a little high. One ball and one strike. Why do you say that? Well, he has the ability to go to right field with such good power. He can wait back and he's got those great wrists and hands. If he tries to off speed him, he can pull it. The fastball he can go the other way with. That's low. And a veteran pitcher like LaPointe will realize that fairly quickly. Won't see too many good pitches for Eric. He'll work all around him trying to get Eric to go after his pitch. And it's three and one. Don't look for a fastball here. Walk to Davis to start the second. First pass given up by LaPointe. Saski will be next. Nick is hitting seven of his last 11 games. Batted 333. Six of 11. Seven of 11. Seven of 11. Seven of come 11. Has a ring to it. Seven <laughs> come 11. Huh? Heard that. <laughs> few times myself. You hear that ball call? We've yeah. heard that a lot too. Yeah. Jerry Crawford at second base made that call. We do not have any idea how many times he balked while with the White Sox. Normal speed. Nope. That's not enough. Got a pause longer than that, Mr. LaPointe. No, no pause. Flat out stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they got Drayback last night. That was his first balk of the year. He was not charged with a balk while pitching for the White Sox last year. Oh! There's a strike. Don't have the record for this season for him I don't believe let's see what oh, Georgia peaches up here a Sasky no! batting 248 and we'll point out in front 0 and 2 they get to thinking about going to right field so much that you don't look inside, especially when he's been pitching away with that off speed pitch. Fastball in on the hands right at the corner. That's inside, one ball and two strikes. Time with two strikes, you can't even be thinking about going to right field. You really got to battle this guy. He really does move the ball around on you. With Eric's speed, any base hit will score him. And a reminder this outfield is very wet. And it's a slick and fast outfield to begin with. Into right field, Reynolds backs up and makes the play. Davis tags, he goes on to third. Good piece of hitting. Finally got the ball out away from him. And he drove it deep enough. R.J. Reynolds had to back up, had no shot at getting Eric going over to third. Down in the bullpen of the Pirates, they've got that stop sign there. That's just to, right to remind, the catcher. Them, remind them about the balk rule. Rather <laughs> good idea, I, I guess, I like Johnny. That. I like it. I got to gotta say that. I don't know who put it up. But whose idea it was? It was they've committed 33 while the opponents have committed only 26. Huh. Well, they, they don't they don't read well, I guess. <laughs> O'Neill is batting 258. 50 RBIs, 13 home runs, went one for four here last night. One ball and one strike. 
splendid performance for his 18th victory for Danny Jackson, who took another giant step toward the Cy Young Award here last evening. Infield in. And there's Belliard is way in. And Belliard is a very tight at that shortstop position. He's past the line between second and third. Two balls and one strike. Well, if he figures that ball's going the other way, and most of the time he pulls, although he has the power to left center. And they also believe that LaPointe, with his off-speed pitches and sinker, will get a ground ball. That was in there. Two and two. Side and Davis holds. O'Neill grounds out. Bream making the play. So it's up to Diaz. Batting seven, catcher number six, Bo Diaz. Very pleasant evening temperature wise, a little more humidity than we had last evening, but, but only in the high 60s. Yep. Very nice temperature. Hope it's cooled off some in the Cincinnati area. Oh, oh, right rain. Rain. Yep. rain went through there this morning. It was clearing off this afternoon when I talked to some friends. You can see uh, the difference in the color of this field, the infield dry for the most part, although it has some wet spots on it. Oh, fouls it away and the points out in front 0 oh, and 2 and this is where he likes to be as you look at Concepcion El Capitan in the con in the contest here tonight playing in second. Be sure to get your official 1988 Reds team picture on Saturday, August 27th when the Reds host the Cardinals at 7.05. It's Maxwell House Coffee team picture night, and everyone in attendance will receive a free color picture of this year's team. Great chance to add this to your collection if you have one, and you might want to start one with this year's team. The date, Saturday, August the 27th, the Reds and Cardinals team picture night. Thanks to Maxwell House Coffee. Hey, I've got team pictures back from 68, and a good friend of mine, Pearl Ackerman, puts them in. Christmas ornaments for me and hang them on the tree. Well, that's great. Here is Bonilla flying out to right. First out here in the second inning. I want to remind you all again that the Cardinals are in town a day early to make up the game that was scheduled back on April 5th and rained out. So there is action Thursday night at 735 at Riverfront against the Cardinals. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Sid Bream is batting 287. Bream 54 RBIs and eight home runs, a high chopper, and the play in time. Charlton getting it over there to Asaski, and we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds television network. Your number one sports station in Cincinnati, WLWT. With Johnny Bench, Jay Randolph at Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh. No score. Got the jug gun down there, Brad Del Barba, the Joe Nosick sitting next to him, just getting up. Brad, of course, the traveling secretary, the Mater D. Dehot, the wherewithal to do it all, handles a myriad of jobs. The Reds. Reynolds batting 251. He has six home runs, 42 RBIs. Mentioned last night when he was a pinch hitter here and went 0 for 1 in the game that he hit the longest home run of the year here, and he's not normally a a home run type way way upstairs in right center 
RJ didn't get a start last night. He's hitting 348 against left-handed pitching. Well, he is out of there. Strikeout number one for Charlton, who's retired the first six in a row. No score. No score as you look at Norm Charlton loosening up at the plate. The man from Venezuela, Dave Concepcion. Oh! Strike one to Concepcion, who originally came up 1970. One ball and one strike. Liner, it gets by Belliard. Infield single for Concepcion. Belliard got the glove on it, but he couldn't come up with it. Johnny and I have indicated to you how fast this field is. That hit on the dry area, but uh, it was a very tough play. Davey moved a little closer to the plate. I'm going to make sure he's ready for the fastball inside. You saw how quick it was. He dove for the ball and it hit the heel of his glove. Thought it was going to get there a little quicker than it did. And we'll see if Charlton can move him over. Concepcion hit 435 last year against Pittsburgh. Charlton. Squares around the bunt. Ooh. It's a good one. Oh, outstanding. The play goes 3-4 on the sacrifice. Concepcion is a second with one gone, and Daniels will come to the dish. Good job by Charlton. Daniels grounded out to first. I want to say hello to the Tim family up in Troy, Ohio. Brian J. Tim is a marketing representative here for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I like the way their card reads when you dial that 800 number. You, It's B-U-Y-B-U-C-S. Buy bucks. Buy bucks. Buy tickets. They're going to break their all-time attendance record here. It was set in 1960 when the Pirates won the World Series at a million seven. They're going to go over that with this team. Yeah, only 124,000 away from breaking that record. Change. Ball one to Daniels. Good look at the playing field. Hope you're enjoying the sights and sounds of red baseball on the network. It's the second game of this three game series. And a good stop by Lean, but the throw's not in time. And they're two on and one out for Sabo. That saved a run. It did save a run. Lean getting to that ball. Cal, the glance over to Lean saying, how you get to that ball? He is the Aussie Smith of second baseman. Well, we talked about his range, and it's outstanding. And watch this. Boy. So often, he slid on this wet surface. He's so far back, but he's got the ability to throw from his knees and throw strikes. We saw him throw from his knees last night in fine fashion on the play out there. Sabo popped out in the first. Had him way out front. LaPointe, the off-speed pitch. Chris has had problems staying back. He's trying so hard. He really has to show patience. Almost try to go the other way. Quick toss over to first. Count 24 steals on the year. This lineup, first four men. Sable with 36, Barry Larkin 32, and Eric with 29. All stolen bases. Daniels with 24 stolen bases out of 29 attempts. Swing and a miss by Sabo. Took something off that one, Johnny. He's just going to off speed him as long as he knows that Chris is going to be jumping out front. He will just sort of showcase that fastball out of the strike zone and come right back, turn it down and away. See the RSC lettering on the Pirate uniforms this year. Another 
swing and a miss by Sabo. That is in honor of the late mayor of Pittsburgh, a marvelous man, Richard Calagieri, who passed away about uh, two and a half months ago. He, uh, as much as anyone, was responsible for keeping the Pirates here and also for doing a great deal of the work that has rejuvenated this city. easy as he strikes out Sabo his second strikeout and it'll be up to Larkin we talked last night Johnny about Mr. Art Rooney the chief and he is worsened his condition as we mentioned last night very grave he is now in a coma here in hospital in Pittsburgh and the prognosis not good 87 years old the patron saint of sports in Pittsburgh and the founder of the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a strike at the knees. Larkin grounded out to end the first. coming over and LaPointe gets out of the jam after two and a half no score to the bottom of the third inning at Three Rivers Stadium and Mike Lavalier 28 years old they call him Smokey Spanky one of the real good defensive catchers in the business Hit 387, became a pretty solid hitter. Came from the Cardinals in the Tony Pena deal, along with Van Slyke and Mike Dunn. It was a heck of a deal for Pittsburgh. Lavalier grounds out to Asaski. Batting lane, shortstop number six, Rafael Belliard. Here is Belliard. Elliard and Bonilla really mired in slumps, and the Pirates having trouble scoring runs these days. How about four for 49 or eight for 80? <laughs> Pittsburgh is. That's what Belliard's stats are. He were one for 13 on a game, I think. Pittsburgh is 12 and 19 in their last 31. That's why they haven't been able to pick up much ground, even though the Mets haven't played very well. Mets got a big victory last night, and the Reds picked up a game on the Dodgers. Oh. A strike on the outside corner, one and one to Belliard. Some criticism about Jim Leland's lineup last night. Yeah, the newspaper boys were uh, kind of critical of the gentlemen who were put on the field last evening. They didn't like him resting anybody. Down the line, foul. He said resting. We only have 38 games to go, and we've got to catch the Mets. Well, I've got to use what I think is the right lineup. It not, might not guarantee the best for you, but I think I think it's the winning lineup. So far, he's done a great job here in Pittsburgh. Sure Doug Graybeck had five extra base hits. The three men preceding him only had a total of six last night. I guess that's a pretty good reason. There is the standings. Into left field, Daniels. Two gone. Batting pitcher point will bat with two gone. Point. His career record in the majors, 64 and 64, coming into tonight's game and a career ERA of 3.81. Against Cincinnati in his career, he's three and five. Whoop! Almost hit him. He's 
said, I don't like to be hitting anyway. I'm from the American League. <laughs> so I've batted twice so far this year, and I've struck out both times. The Yankees lead Oakland 3-0, third inning. A chopper for Concepcion. He handles it in time. And Charlton and his mates have retired the first nine in order. Ken Griffey giving some instruction down there. Talking to Jeff Reed. Oh, he's got most of his attention, though. Mm -hmm. Jeff's leaned out of it. They probably talked both ears off, and he's had to lean forward. <laughs> Eric Davis. He has walked. Was stranded at third in the second inning. We move into the fourth. 0 2 0 for the Reds. Zero is across the board for the Pirates. Change up. Strike one to Davis. Title to one guess. Thought maybe Dave might throw him the fastball. kind of you know, there's a lot of comparisons to what the Tigers did last year when they got Doyle Alexander he came up and did the job for them now the point of change up artists over here one ball and two strikes this is the sixth straight game incidentally that the Reds have used a left-handed starter Browning will make it seven tomorrow night well, then we get the youngster coming up who was just called up, Keith Brown. That's right. 24 year old right hander. He'll start against the Cardinals on Thursday night. Lifetime 35 and 10 with an ERA of 172 in the minor leagues. So far this year in double A and triple A, he's 15 and 4. Davis standing at the plate looking back at Mark Kirschbeck. Now heads back to the dugout. Strikeout number three for LaPointe. Change up the change up away, and now the fastball. Ooh, a little help from Lavalier with the jerk. That's part of the game. Certainly is. <laughs> is Sasky fly to right in the second? Fouls it back. Well, it, it shouldn't have to be that if the umpire is sitting on the inside part of the plate. He shouldn't have to watch a catcher's mitt to see if he pulls it back in. He should call the play immediately. Another foul. The Reds 21 and 15 since the All-Star break. They won six of their last nine. 11 of their last 17. But it's been tough making up any ground on the Dodgers. Fly ball into right. That's R.J. Reynolds out there tonight. Two gone. Right fielder, Paul O'Neill. O'Neill grounded out in the second inning. A light hitting affair to this point. We're in the top of the fourth. No score. the play after three and a half nothing shaking you're watching Reds baseball on the Cincinnati Reds television network Charlton with the pitch to Bonds Jeff Treadway is listening to us tonight. No extra charge, Jeffy. How are you? <laughs> okay. One ball and one strike. Bonds with that 293 average at the moment. Started the night at 294 after flying into center field. 
Bonds played only baseball at Arizona State, although he went there to play basketball and football. <laughs> he was smart. He was smart. He found the right career. One ball and two strikes. And Charlton strikes him out. That's the second K for Norm. Pulled him on this one. Really did. Well, the bottom dropped out of that baby. That's a hard slider right there, or a super sinker. Lean also lied to center in the first. That's a little low. Mark Hirschbeck is the umpire behind the plate. Another one inside. A reminder announced it last evening, Jose Rio on the DL, retroactive to last Monday. As Johnny has already mentioned to you, Keith Brown will join the Reds when they return home and is slated to start on Thursday night. Ron Robinson returned to Cincinnati today and uh, Dr. Warren Harding took a look at him. Uh, he's still battling his arm problems. Three and one. Trump. Got that hat pulled down over his ears almost. Kind of squints in to get that sign. You almost think as a hitter he might not be able to see well up there. <laughs> might make a little nervous. That's called deep in the hat, isn't it? Houston has hit Chicago with two. They're playing another night game at Wrigley. Kevin Bass singled, scored. Young and Ramirez. This is fouled out of play off to the right side. We're scoreless here. Bottom of the fourth inning. And the Reds have missed a couple of golden opportunities. There's a third base with one out. And with nobody out. What a comeback. And the strikeout is number three. Charlton now has retired 11 in a row. Well, I should say runners are third with one out twice. Right. Van Slyke popped out the shortstop to end the first inning. Humidity and a little perspiration up on Charlton. And having to work awful hard to keep these Pirates even, scoreless, and perfect. And as Saski makes the play at first, another one, two, three inning after four, zero, zero. Bo Diaz leading it off as we move into the fifth, and he's thrown out by Bonilla. Bo struck out in the second. Here's Concepcion, who has one of the two hits for the Reds. Dave led off with an infield single in the third and was stranded at third base. And Jose Lean right now with a save, you might say, because he kept that run from scoring with a great play on Daniel's smash up the middle. Number 13. I wonder who he might like. Man at the plate. In a lot of societies, 13 is not an unlucky number. I wonder how it became an unlucky number in our. I just world. knew you would have the answer. That's why. No, I no, no, no. That's that's your. You have all the answers. You're the genius on this squad. <laughs> so we'll get a letter. Somebody will tell us. Somebody in the truck. I'll know. Jesse. One ball and one strike. And a high chopper. And the toss in time. And uh, Concepcion holding on to LaPointe as he went by there. The high chopper, and of course, Dave LaPointe not blessed with the best amount of speed, and he falls over to the third base side to begin with. He's just trying to get over there. And <laughs> you can see that was a long time for me to run, and David just separating them so nobody gets spiked. Except the old moving a little faster than the point. <laughs> that spot. Charlton did a nice job of the sacrifice in the third. And 
charging is leaned. They're down one, two, three. Four and a half innings have been played. We're still scoreless. The Reds dug out. No score. Bottom of the fifth. Reds fans, here's a new special date that you won't want to miss. We've been talking about it. We like it a lot. It's Snapper Corduroy Cap Day, Sunday, August 28th, when the Reds and the Cardinals tune it up at 215. First 15,000 fans in attendance, 18 and over, will receive a free Reds Corduroy Cap. This distinctive cap will set you apart as a Reds fan wherever you go. It is nice. So make plans now to attend the Reds Cardinal game on Sunday, August 28th for the Corduroy Cap Day. That's thanks to Snapper Lawn and Garden Equipment. It's a snap with a snapper, and they've got the cap for well, I've got an I've got an answer for the third team. I think it's right. It, was, it had to do with the Last Supper when Judas Iscariot was there. And he was the 13th person at the uh, dinner, and Jesus said, somebody will betray me there. And he did. Uh, I knew you'd come up with an answer. I said a few, I don't know, several telecasts back about put Jesus in the little boat. That, the little that, thing. That, that was Moses. Jesus. Yeah, that was, that Moses. was Moses. I meant to, at that time, I was trying to correct you that night. Yeah, well, I you remember really it had jumped in on me. Yeah, well, sure. it had something to do with the bull rushes. I remember that. The bull that. rushes, I understand. Bonilla takes high. One ball and one strike. My brother would have never forgiven me if I hadn't straightened that out. And a right. lot of other people, too, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> balls and one strike to Vanilla. He's fifth in the National League with walks. He has 68 coming into tonight's game. Moved to third late last season. And uh, going to try to hide him down there, you might say. Well, they wanted to get him in the line and give him a chance. Right. He has committed 26 errors this year. Last year, Keith Moreland led the National League in errors with 28. Two and two. Oh, a dandy pitch from Charlton. And he has struck out three of the last four that he has faced. And that is strikeout number four. Charlton has had to work hard to get his outs using these split fingers the fastball the slider and you can see him give up on it and it breaks down and he said my goodness this youngster's got good stuff on the other side of the ledger LaPointe has thrown four pitches to get four outs That's right. the last four men have been retired swing at the first pitch that's patience Bream rounded out Visual say popped up. I think he grounded up. One three. Back in the second. Bream has 32 doubles. He's third in the league. Uh, Sabo with 36 is second in that department. The double leaders are Galarraga with 37, then Sabo and Bream and Barry Bonds with 28. That's a sneaky statistic. He said Bream with 32 doubles. He went around. Two and two. struck out four of the last five and Mr. Charlton is rolling along here. Well he's shown them the sinker and that off speed pitch it's not that much off speed it's got a quick downer to it and hey now he gets the high fastball up and gets Breen chasing it. Here's Reynolds who struck out in the second. Foul outside of first. Some of the water that is still on the warning tracks here. It's just high. And the first hit of the game for the Pirates. He had retired 14 in a row. Reynolds.
Cole singles to left with two out here in the fifth. Pretty good job by Mr. Charlton here tonight. Well, he's had to do it. How many runs are scarce in this ballpark? Pirates only scored four against Houston. Shut out last night. Houston did not score a lot of runs. It took 14 innings on Sunday to get the game over with. A two to one victory by the Astros. Last night, a two to nothing win by the Reds. Avalier grounded out to start the third inning. He bats with two gone in the runner at first. Foul at the plate. Never know what Leland might do with RJ. RJ has stolen 12 bases in 14 attempts. Like talking to his manager there. That's high to Lavalier. Lavalier was originally signed by the Phillies in '81. The Cardinals inked him to a minor league free agent contract prior to the '85 season. Born in Charlotte, North Carolina, but he grew up up in New England. That's out of play. Reynolds was on the move. He started him on the play. Lavalier was a fine high school and college soccer player and hockey player. One ball and two strikes and. Charlton throws over. Another toss to first. Tommy Sant coaching at first base. Mr. Leyland. Gene Lamont handles those chores over at third. One ball and two strikes to Lavalier. Reynolds not going. Popped up, back out of play. They're on the air tomorrow night at 7.30. Tom Browning and Mike Dunn will be the hurlers. Hope you can join us along the Reds network. down there. Goose eggs on the board for both teams here as we play in the bottom of the fifth inning. Charlton again over to first. measured and he makes the play five innings and still neither team has been able to put anything up it's 0 2 and 0 for the Reds 0 1 and 0 for the Pirates as we move into the sixth inning a snappy game light hitting affair LaPointe and Charlton rolling along and here's Johnny get the heavy hitters in here yes sir. Daniels leads off Looks at a breaking ball just outside. Daniel Sabo and Larkin in the inning. Cal one for two. He was robbed of an RBI by Jose Lean. When the ball hit up the middle, Lean made the stop but could not throw Cal out. Timed it just right and missed it. Popped it up. Back of short. Rafael Belliard, a long look as he looks up above them and all he sees is birds flying around the stadium up above. Cleaning out the insect drop, I guess. One out. At least Cal got to see a couple of pitches. Point through one to O'Neill, one to Diaz, one to Concepcion, and one to Norm Charlton. And now 
Chris, who has not solved the point at all. Yeah, he's jumping. Not a lot of patience shown by Chris right now. Popped to third and struck out. There's something to wait back on. Base hit on the left field. And Reds have their third hit of the evening. The point has walked one. That was Eric Davis. He has struck out three. Chris last night was on twice, both via errors. And on Sunday, had one for four. So he's three for 13, three for 17, now four for 20. On this road trip, Barry Larkin at 286, looking for her his first hit of the evening. Chris. Leads the team in steals, and the point will play a, pay a lot of attention to him. He'll throw over there, he'll step off and throw. He's quick coming up with his leg, but slow as he goes to the plate. Chris, 36 stolen bases. Green holds it first. Larkin waits, but it moves to first once again. Sable back easily. Chris was picked off last night. Stole his 35th base in the third inning. And got picked off in the fifth by Doug Grayback. Small crowd on hand. Last night a paid attendance of 17 plus. This night with a rain a little slower and a slide step by LaPointe gets the quick pitch home, but it's down and in the Larkin. One ball, no strikes. Reds moved eight and a half games back with the win last night. Great effort by Danny Jackson. His fourth complete game in a row. There's that side step. That left foot off the rubber. Fires over. The Dodgers were defeated by Dwight Gooden last night. John Tudor took the loss. Sabo breaks back. He drops out a button in front of the plate. Lavar said, I'll take it. And he's going to call him out for hitting, having hit Barry in fair territory. Lavar didn't even bother to call. He knew that the umpire was going to make the call. He must have heard something in his ear to that effect. We'll take a look here, Jay. Yep. A little butt right yep. there. It hit him on the head. Hit him on the helmet coming out of there. Hit him right there on the left shoulder. Look at LaVire. And already Mark Hirschbeck is making the call. Put out for the catcher. Eric now stands in. Walked and struck out. So far in this game. And that ball not hit him, Johnny. It uh, was going to be a very rugged play for Lavalier because uh, Larkin had gotten an excellent jump down there. Well, he had called off LaPointe or he was making the move to Mark Hirschbeck. And LaPointe took it as the fact that he was calling him off the ball. And so LaPointe moved away from the play, but it went for naught. Eric, since the All-Star break, 42 for 123. That's a 341 average. Ball down and in. And the count, two balls and no strikes with two outs. Mark Charlton and Dave LaPointe. Two very opposite type pitchers, but two very effective pitchers here tonight. Chris has not been able to read LaPointe. He has really changed his rhythm. There's the slide step. There goes Chris, and he's going to have a tough time making it. Lean make the play and made the tag at the same time. Buck stealing for LaVire. Great play by Lean. It's still scoreless. We go to the bottom of the sixth. That's the bottom of the sixth inning, and Raphael Belliard leads off. LaPointe on deck and Barry Bonds, and we'll take a look at that play that ended the top of the sixth inning. And 
you're going to see a major league catcher and a major league infielder. Let's take a look at it right now, Jay. This Look at this ball. This ball hops right at the plate. Yeah, tough play, really. And Lavalier just comes up and then a bouncer out there. Lean stayed on the bag, stayed at home. He was able to reach out and get it and tag him on the shoulder there. Carlton deals a fastball for a strike. It's one and one. Billy Yard by the left in the second inning, third inning. Fastball foul right off the hands. And she can't get over to get it. She cannot get over to get it. And <laughs> it is stolen. She couldn't put her first down. She didn't have a place. She didn't have any help. Billy Yard so is stolen uh, ball. Hit rather well against the Reds. Well, she said, year. I got popcorn. I'm not going <laughs> to trade the popcorn. Here's Michael Lavalier. Lavalier. Belliard, 333 against the Reds this season. Paul O'Neill will make the play. We want to say hello to, uh, once again to our friends down in Charlotte, North Carolina. WHKY, Channel 14. General Manager Jeff Long, the sales manager, Jim Carr. <laughs> Only one man has reached base for the Pirates. That was R.J. Reynolds, who singled in the fifth. The point made contact for the first time this year. Grounded to Concepcion at second base to end the third inning. Oh. Charlton with good movement on that fastball and good location. Very good movement. Looks like something. Funny here, that split finger. Went down. That was a good move. See if we can come from center field and see as he goes into the glove and see how he operates as he goes back into that glove. The basketball is the sixth strikeout for Norm tonight. He has not walked anybody. As we said, he's only given up the one hit. And we go to the top of the order for Barry Bonds. Average on the season, 21 home runs, 49 RBIs. That's pretty good for a leadoff hitter. Career versus the Reds. It's worn out the Reds severely. 29 for 79 and a 367 average. And he's hit over 60 home runs in really just about two and a half seasons. Slider and misses. It's two and zero. Oh. He's a 367 career hitter against the Reds. I tell you, you just said that, and I, I looked it up to make sure. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> yeah, it, Tom Browning's had a little problem with Barry. I know a few times he's taken him out of the ballpark. That it's awfully good for a left-hander to hang in there the way he does. Down goes the three and one. A chance tomorrow. Try to get a little more even with Barry. Fly ball to O'Neill. And it's a 1 2 3 inning once again for Charlton and the Reds. It's nothing, nothing. Top of the seventh. Stand up and stretch. Stretch for some runs. <laughs> if you're watching, it's nothing, nothing. And you probably think we're looking at the women. No, we're not. We're looking at Murray Cook there at the bottom of your screen. That's Carol Rose and Laura Bench. And should be able to recognize the other line drive down the left field line foul. Eric Davis swinging at the first pitch. Eric is walking struck out. He was at the plate when Sabo was caught stealing. Since the All Star break, we talked about the turnaround that Eric has made. Pass ball in on the hands and it's inside. Norm not warming up with that jacket. He wants a little extra insurance. Puts that towel around it to keep that heat in. Ooh, thought that might be the run we needed right there. He was trying to go for the downs, wasn't he? Well, Jay is. Uh, we look down the bullpen. A couple of guys up throwing for the Pirates, and then maybe just getting some work in. Obviously, they're not ready to take out Dave Lapointe. Now that they've gone this far, they can. 
take a reliever that uh, usually would be the middle man in the inning or get a starter up to do some throwing. Number 54 is Brian, Brian Fisher. Fisher and Dave Rucker. I think he pitched in relief. And so they're basically the middle men. Jeff Robinson and Jim Gott, the closers for this staff. Along with Kipper. Two balls, two strikes, no out. Nothing, nothing ball game. Top of the seventh inning. Ground ball in the hole at short. O'Neill will cut it off and fire in time. And one ball. Pirates with a record of 68 and 57. Reds at three games over 500, trying for that elusive four. They haven't been there yet. Yeah, feel good. Feel good. We kept trying to get them to 500. Now we're trying to get them to four over, and then That's five true. over. That's oh, right. cute off the end of the bat. I don't know if LaPointe can get to it. He won't beat him there. He tags him. Good play by LaPointe. A heads up play. I didn't think he was that quick. I didn't think he could make the play, and he did. Nick's only salvation would have been to slide. Yeah, that's a real cue ball. As an afterthought, that would have maybe made the difference, but right here, I didn't think LaPointe would get there, and he did. There it is again, and the tag just before the foot hits the back. Steve Ripley with the call and a good one. one on Look at the point. He, I think he's glad he made that play. Somebody sent out for the oxygen bottle. Ball 0 for 2. Popped up the first. Grounded to short. Ball had a chance. The second inning to pick up an RBI after Davis had walked and was balked to second, went to third on a fly ball by Nick Asaski. Paul hit one right at Bream, and Eric had no place to go. Reds in the second inning with a, another chance with men at first and third, and only one out were unable to score. Sabo struck out, and Larkin flied to left. Reds have had four base runners in this game, and Pirates, only one, R.J. Reynolds, who has the only hit for them in the fifth inning. Hit the line drive to Van Slyke. Puts it in the saddle, sticks it in his holster. Nothing, nothing. Bottom of the seventh. Nothing, nothing. And hi, sir. How you doing? Out of boy. Matty Red fan all the way. Got his jersey. And we're here in the bottom of the seventh inning. He said, I thought these guys were supposed to hit. <laughs> There's Lean to lead off the seventh. He's 0 for 2. Struck out his last time up and looks at a strike. Well, they're watching in Pensacola, Florida tonight on WJTC Channel 44. Our best wishes to Tom Eaton, the general manager, and Lee Eshler, the sales manager. Reach for the changeup. Pitch it down the left field line. It'll be a double for Lee. The first man to reach second for the Pittsburgh Pirates tonight. And Lean, who was 8 for 82, gets a hit. These fans love it. They'd take anything right now. Lean reached out and got that one. What about a changeup? Yeah, a little looper down the left side. Double to start things for the Bucks here in the seventh. He leaned out and got it. He did indeed. Van Slyke looks at a fastball upstairs, and he's caught the short against the Reds in his career, 322. Oh, these fellows have hit rather well against the Reds. Well, that was their old pitching staff. I'll take our staff this year. Yeah, right. I will too. One ball count. Breaking ball down and away. Coleman, the 
10. And the rookie, Don Gant, down in Atlanta with eight. Charlton takes a little too long for Andy, and he steps out. So flashes the signs. Charlton wants another one. Oh, he got the right pitch, a slider, and he chased it. Steps out of the box, tries to kick some of the dirt out of his cleats as you stand in the outfield, of course, and walk out from in front of the dugouts. It's very wet, and as soon as you step into this batter's ring at home plate, plods up the cleats pretty good. Leaned the runner at second, trying to become the first run of the evening. And Charlton checks, deals. Hard hit ball, deep right field. Back goes O'Neill. He'll look up. It's gone. Home run, number 22 for Van Slyke. RBIs 80 and 81. become big medicine here in Pittsburgh. Andy Van Slyke breaks the tie with the two run homer over the wall and right. Here it is from the swing. Steps into it and he got all of it. Out Here's of here. Bonilla. Looks at a strike on the inside edge. Rob Murphy quickly up in the Reds' bullpen. That's a career high for Van Slyke. He leads the Pirates one more than Bonds. And two more than the man at the plate. Here's Murph down in the pen, loosening up quickly. Didn't get the pitch last night, and Augusto went ahead of him. And Juan Augusto won his 10th straight last night. O'Neill really frustrated. Takes one on the inside. He thought was inside. Takes one on the outside. He thought was outside. And he's down in the count. No balls and two strikes. And Slykes home run measured at 379 feet. Is that just where it hits something? I guess they measured with a they don't IBM computer here. Farther, yeah. And the point is saying thanks so much. Side makes the count 2 2. California leads Boston 2 to 1. Jim Rice hit his 10th home run in the bottom of the fifth. Strike three on the call. Bobby is really frustrated, and you can understand why. Seventh strikeout for Norm. Ooh. Must have thought he swung at it. I think they felt he did go around, as you can see the frustration that you mentioned, Johnny, there on Vanilla's face. <laughs> Bonilla has played in every game this year. Only three players have done that in the National League: Will Clark and Steve Sachs. Sid, 0 for 2. He struck out the he was struck out the last time up. Change up. This is inside. Two balls, no strikes. We'll be back tomorrow night to bring you the ball game. 7:30. As you tuned in. Three and zero. The dream is R.J. Reynolds waits on deck. Looking ahead for the Reds, it's Diaz, Concepcion, and Charlton. Do up. There's a strike. Green, who's third in the league. Jay told you in doubles with 32. A chance he might be turned loose right there, but he didn't get his pitch that he wanted. Leland trying to get all the runs he can. He swings and misses. And count now full. Bream is playing in his native state. He's from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Jim Thorpe 
Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indians. Well, as we came into the seventh inning, R.J. Reynolds was the only runner to be aboard for the Pirates. And now they've had three men aboard here in the seventh inning. A double by Lean, the home run by Van Slyke, and now Sid Bream with a base hit in the center field. Well, they're listening along the network line tonight down in the Mountain State, Charleston and Huntington, West Virginia, over, over WVAH, Channel 11. Don Wilburn's the general manager. Steve Rabb, the sales manager, and P.J. Ryle, the local sales manager. Glad to have you with us tonight. Our good friend, my good friends, the Darbies are listening down in Pensacola, Florida on Channel 44. E.H. Darby family. Wow. Florence, Alabama, got a little place down on the beach. Breen takes off, but Reynolds hits the first pitch right into center field, and he just doesn't even bother to run. He's not 20 feet from the plate. Yes, there's no lights up there that could get in the way or nobody <laughs> could fall down and miss it. Uh, Too gone. Hope you're enjoying a bush at home tonight. And if we can see the comeback. Here's Lavalier. There goes Bream. He got too big a jump for oh, Bo to even act oh. like it. No reason to even throw, was it? Read it the other way. Sid Bream. Well, he has stolen eight bases in 16 attempts, so he's now over the 500 mark with his ninth. Play on Levier, and the Reds are out of the seventh inning. But Charlton gives up the two-run homer to Van Slyke, and Pirates have taken a two-to-nothing lead. Eighth inning, and the Reds trail by two. The point is coasting along. He's yet to give up an earned run in a Pirate uniform. He falls behind in the count and. Now they got a little relief, and I doubt that that's still Brian Fisher and Rucker. More likely, Jim Gott might be warming up down in that pen. Gott is the ace of that bullpen, and 35 is Jim Gott. 36 Rucker's still, Rucker's there. still there. Gott leads the Pirate bullpen with 23 saves, only three behind John Franco. And the points having trouble finding home plate. He wasn't used to his teammates being out on the field that long. Oh, There's a strike. Boy, if ever you could depend on the point finally throwing a fastball over the plate, that was it. He'll take just a little bit off on this one. And he gets a pop up back here in the stands, 3-2. Steps on on deck and, and Pete will look for a pinch hitter. High drive center field. And Slyke. And Lloyd McClendon. Pete will have a chance, hopefully, to use McClendon. Uh, if the runner gets on, we'll see how that works. As the inning continues for Concepcion, who singled in the third inning. He's one for two. Average now at 203. They'd be two for four in his start on Saturday. Look at, look at his eyes. Trying to figure out where everybody is. Try to go to right field if Green moves towards the line too much. Big hole up the middle. Hold the string. Well, it has moved to the on deck circle. And Davy behind the count, no balls and two strikes. Fell behind 3-0 and now has come back to throw strike. 
in the last four deliveries. This is for the ball. Look yeah. at that moon. Yeah, we have that Allegheny moon up above us again tonight. It just uh, appeared in the last few minutes. Uh, it went through pretty quick, if that is it. They said it might clear up. There's some clouds passing by it. A little opening. And a check swing and an easy hopper for the point. He'll throw low, and it's picked up by Bring. Just too nonchalant. Got some help. Three Rivers Stadium at the confluence here of the Allegheny and the Monongahela. There's that Allegheny moon. Remember that song, Allegheny moon? I really don't. Well, I do. I'm not going to sing it for you. Oh. You are the singer in the group. I'll have to get you. I knew it, I would sing I'll it. I'll get you the lyrics. Thank you. <laughs> moon over Miami or something like that? Conway Twitty, I talked to the man on the moon. Right now, we need to talk about getting some hits, and it's up to Lloyd McClendon as he leads on, as he bats here with two outs. Lloyd, three home runs, 14 RBIs, and looks at a strike. Lloyd, five for 16, pinch hitting. One pinch hit home run and a three RBI number as a pinch hitter. Charlton for the night, seven innings, four hits, two runs, two earned runs. He walked no one. He struck out seven. Pretty good performance. Well, it really was. Really a good effort. One pitch. Got away. All speeded McClendon and got the big swing. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Responded Norm Charlton. No matter what, he might have thought he pitched well, but he is behind in the game and he is not happy. Bounce in the dirt, picked up by Lavalier. Lavalier and LaPointe were teammates for the Cardinals. There's Murphy. Well, Van Slyke and LaPointe were teammates for the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Check swing and a slow roller. Long run for Bonilla. He'll barehanded throw it. It's wide. And they'll probably give him a base hit. Sure and do. do. Yep. Bonilla playing so deep with two strikes. Can't make the play. Just a little check swing. And as you mentioned, Johnny, Bonilla had a long, long way to come. He made the play nicely. Threw a little wide, but uh, there was just no way. Another view of it. Oh, excuse me. Now wait a minute. I've got a shot, and I've got an infield hit. Well, it runs well, as evidenced by that move down the line. And here's Daniels, and one left-hander like Van Slyke hit one off Charlton. Maybe we can get the same thing from Cal. Hang one. All right, fastball and it's taken. Sabo on deck and got more than ready down in the bullpen. The point lets this inning continue. Green playing behind McClendon. And the point now struggling to find the plate against Daniels. Both teams with four hits. No errors in the game, and only one walk. That was given up by LaPointe. High, ball three. And he's about to pitch himself out of this game. Ball four would more than likely do that, and Jim Leland knows that he has a right-hander and a left-hander in the bullpen. Looks over towards the Reds' dugouts. Looks towards his lineup card. Looks towards LaPointe. And it's ball four, the second walk. Let's look towards the top of the dugout and see where Leland is. There he is. He's going to see Mark Hirschbeck. That should be a double switch. And Mark Hirschbeck points to Steve Ripley and says he wants the right-hander. So Leland is now making the move as Gott comes in in a hurry. And we'll go out. 
for these short messages. We'll be back. It's the Bucks leading at two to nothing here in the top of the eighth. It takes a team with experience to make sense out of an election year. Close teamwork can report the local meaning of a national vote. A news team that covers the world brings perspective to election results. And a team that knows Cincinnati clarifies the impact at home. Working together brings the insight needed for Decision 88. Clear. Understandable. Together. The NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw and News 5. Our team is going places for you only on NBC and Channel 5. The legendary WSAI AM 1360 is back and rocking the best gold. And we want you to win a fabulous eight-day Caribbean adventure aboard the Commodore cruise ship Carib. Adams Tour and Travel have planned this once-in-a-lifetime vacation that includes romantic nights, the sun, the exotic foods, and entertainment. To enter, just send in the entry blank from the smart shopper or send a postcard to WSAI. Listen to WSAI AM 1360 for all the details. The station you grew up with is back. Listen to WSAI and win. Dave LaPointe with a fine reception by the fans here at Pittsburgh. Tips his hat, says thank you, and he leaves a couple of men on for Jim Goddard. Double switch puts Glenn Wilson out in right field. Wilson was in the game last night. He will bat ninth. And Jim Gott, the new pitcher, moves into the sixth spot behind uh, Sid Bream. He will bat sixth. And there you get a look at Jim Gott, Jay. Gott, who went to school at Brigham Young University, grew up out in California. Of course, he uh, was claimed from San Francisco for the $50,000 waiver price in August of 87. And it has turned out to be a very fine investment. Yeah, God really has found his niche. He was not given much of a chance out there. He said, I've had enough. Was, from that angle, we could have looked at his pitches as he warmed up. He's got a good arm, a good live fastball, and a big breaking slider. And he was in line behind Gerelts and J Robinson at that time. And you take a look at the runners. Daniels at first, McClendon at second. Not with 23 saves, going with that 6-4. One loss. The point goes seven and two-thirds. Four hits. Struck out three. Walked two. And the men on base, of course, are his responsibility. Chris. Single his last time up was caught stealing. One for three. Slider grounded towards the hole. Bonilla will cut it off. The throw over and in time. Got those one pitch and gets the point out of the inning. Eight innings are complete. Well, no, they're not. Not yet. We got to go to the bottom of the eighth for that to happen. It's two nothing Pirates. There's the score. Pirates lead it. Let's remind you that coming up Friday, August 26th, Great back to school giveaway night. The Reds meeting the Cardinals at 735. It's Borden's Notebook Night. And the first 10,000 fans, 16 and under, receive the free Reds three ring binder. It's just perfect for organizing all your school papers. Start your school year on a positive note with a Reds Notebook that you can pick up Friday, August 26. Thanks to our good friends at Borden Dairy. The 88 Reds program yearbook and media guide, of course, are on sale at the Reds gift shop at the Hyatt Regency. New edition of the Reds yearbook features color pictures, lineup cards, interesting stories about this year's team, and, uh, of course, a uh, picture page from the All-Star game. The media guide contains all kinds of stats, team records, and more. The Reds publications can be picked up at the gift shop, or you can order by mail. Or by phone, you can call 513-651-7200. Don't forget the cookbook. Oh, the cookbook is on sale at the gift shop at the beautiful Hyatt Regency in downtown Cincinnati. Rob Murphy on in relief for the Reds. And his first pitch high and away from Raphael Belliard. And for Murph, 61st appearance. 0-5 is his record. Strike call, and it's even at one. Murph with three saves on the year. Like to pick up a win here. Needs a couple of runs in the ninth to have that make three runs in the ninth to have that happen. Hold them here and get three in the ninth, huh? That's right. 
Strap some leather on them. Sounds good to me. 0 4 0 for the Reds. 2 4 0 for the Pirates. And a great effort by Dave LaPointe, who gets up no runs. Earth high and away. It's 3 and 1. Frankie Williams. For a little insurance, warms down in the bullpen. Needs a strike. And doesn't get it. Walks belly arm. First base on balls given up by a red pitcher tonight. And Wilson, who was in last night's ball game. And Glenn doubled his first time up and was one for three on the evening. Just recently traded for from Seattle for Darnell Coles. He's up there to sacrifice hard bunt. Back to Murphy. Murphy can't handle it. He hurries and gets him at first. He thought about going to second. Was able to ride himself. The ball was bunted hard enough that he got out there in front of him. And so Wilson has retired one to three. Well, did Murphy sacrifice? Have a play at second? I think possibly he did, but he was in such a hurry to make it that he had trouble picking the ball up and then had only the play at first. Barry Bonds 0 for 3 on the evening. Barry last night 0 for 3. Pitch is high. Four game series over the weekend. Cardinals. Rain out, made up, make up date for Thursday. Now field straight away for Bonds. Strike call on the inside corner. It's two and one. Rain. Came down here in Pittsburgh this afternoon and see the wet field and the defense for the Reds. Three balls and a strike. Murphy misses downstairs. Two-thirds innings. He walked three. His control off, and the Cardinals hit him for five runs on four hits to go along with those three walks. Breeden leaves with the congregation still on the mound, and Mark Hirschbeck out there to try to move things along. I don't know what Jerry Crawford is probably saying today. Of course, he always says that Davies. Working it a little too slow. Barry Bonds at first base. Raphael Belliard at second. And Davey saying it's a 9.30 ball game. You guys are way ahead of time as it is. We're trying to hold them here. Might be able to get two runs. Three or four might be a little more difficult. And Lean, who doubled his last time up, grounds towards Sabo. Sabo to Concepcion. Concepcion the first. Double play. And just like that, the Reds are out of the inning. They have one more chance to get back in this ball game. They trail two to nothing. And it's coming to the top of the ninth. Uh, she's showing off. Patty and Maxine, where's Laverne? Yeah, where's Laverne? <laughs> yeah. Well, Laura, not happy with his offense, I'll tell you that. She tells me about the game after it's over. Yeah. She's uh, they were good tonight, or they stunk. She's become quite an expert. You know, she really has yeah. somebody didn't particularly like baseball or know much about it. She she said, let's go with the game. Yeah, she enjoys she likes it. to go all the time. Get us some runs here, Long Well, I, the only thing that's going to make her happy right now is to get some runs. She gets a little despondent when they don't get runs. 
Barry. That's a strange stat down at the bottom, but that's exactly what happened. He bunted the ball and the ball came up and hit him as he was running in fair territory. Fly ball to Glenn Wilson, who came in the last inning and the double switch and quickly one gone. And Gott's thrown two pitches and had two out. <laughs> Well, you know, a guy that's going to be around the plate, like Gott, he's got the good fastball and the good slider. He's a power pitcher. You got to go up there looking for something that first pitch and try to get on it. Put him in the hole right away. He's got good control. He's not going to put himself in too much trouble. 2-9 ERA, and he's only allowed 49 hits in 62 innings. Austin's leading California 3-2, going to the sixth inning. Uh, Mike Greenwell has his 100th RBI of the year, becoming the first player in the majors to reach that mark. He got an RBI single as the Red Sox got three in the bottom of the fifth. He knew that wasn't going to last long. Harry trying to cut the margin in half, fouls it back. One ball and one strike, one out, top of the ninth inning. Eric fifth in the National League with 23 home runs. Daryl Strawberry leads the league with 30. Charlton, who pitched excellent baseball, only one base runner in the first six innings, had it perfect except for that one hit. R.J. Reynolds. Ball hit into right field, base hit. And Eric keeps the inning going for Nick Osaski. three tonight and Nick over three Fly to right fly to right and grounded back to the pitcher who tagged him yes indeed they saw themselves up there the Sasky fans not only there but out in left field we've got a Sasky fans from Georgia we had some people out in right field or something from Hamilton or Fairfield Ohio I don't know if we ever showed them Somebody was up here talking about a nice group of people that came from Hamilton Fairfield to watch the game tonight. I understand while we were looking away, they did get on television. Now the task at hand. Reds need two runs here in the ninth to tie. Ground ball towards Belliard. Over the lane. That'll do it. Double play. Number 101 for the Pittsburgh Pirates. A win for Dave LaPointe. A save for Jim Gott is 24th. Game winning RBI on the two run homer by Andy Van Slyke. It's